So I remember growing up on these courts, um, there was a classic tournament called Street Slam at Sheldon, and all the young kids would actually hoop in the Sheldon parking lot, and then the older kids would get to play in the cage. So whenever we'd finish up, we'd go watch the finals and the later games, and I remember you know, watching guys that we looked up to, university athletes, and always because of that just thought the cage was something so cool and so raw. So I grew up playing at the cage, right? Um, a group of us actually coined the name. It doesn't take a, a brainiac to know why we, why we called it the cage. It's not shitty, it's, it just looks shitty. It always kind of hit close to home for me. It's like a, a spot in my neighborhood that I grew up playing basketball around. How do we tell this story? How do we make this visually striking? How do we get people to stop and spend time with this? That was our main goal. Well, two main goals, that and then make cool shit and make it look good. Let's do something impactful and do it in the city that we grew up hooping in, in a city that has an incredible basketball community, which is Regina. Let's take this inspiration that we've had from Courts of the World and bring it right home to the city that we love. There's a rusty old chain link outdoor court that, uh, you know, was, I think more than a basketball court, it was more so like just like a spot to meet up. Like, I remember going to the cage to get up to all sorts of, <laughs> get up to all sorts of trouble, right? Meet there, you can meet your friends, you could, uh, you know, it was, it was a spot. It was just a spot. We've had a lot of games on that hard fought battles with slippery gravel underneath our feet um, close to close to where I live now so that's that's something special the cage there's there's, there's no court like it I think in the city this uh, facility here the basketball facility in about 97 they put it was an underutilized uh, facility there were two tennis courts the city had built had asphalted the area put up two tennis courts and the facility was really underutilized. So it was nice when the basketball hoops went up because that created the cage. And there were certainly more kids at those ages of, you know, sort of 12, 13, 13 to 18 that wanted to play basketball than play tennis at that time. Yeah, the court was not in good shape. Beat up, you always slip when you play, the asphalt was ripped up, there was never any meshes. Uh, the paint was falling off all the backboards, there was rips in all the chain link. It just was a feeling of something being left. And it was no longer a iconic hoop spot. So I was kind of like, like it's going to be hard to sound no, so good. No, no. Go here. <clears throat> Beautiful sound. Buckets and Borders is a volunteer group that uses basketball as a means to improve communities. We started in 2015 as an initiative to document streetball culture around the world through photography and journalism. Over the past several years, we've traveled to numerous different countries and met and played basketball with people from all over the world. Our experiences have taught us that good outdoor basketball courts bring people together and create community. So we took this inspiration and brought it back home. We're a group of friends who really just grew up together playing hoops and want to give back to a game that we love and a community that we love. So we're launching the Lakeview Project, our first volunteer project set to take place in summer 2020. The project will oversee the refurbishment and rebuilding of the two outdoor basketball courts behind Sheldon Williams Collegiate. 
The vision of the Lakeview project is to transform the cage into a community park that fosters inclusivity and celebrates cultural diversity and to create the most iconic outdoor basketball court in the prairies. I think like to start, it was like, I mean, it was, it was really simple. It was like, let's roll up and, and let's hoop and meet people via those avenues. But it was also just like our avenue, our outlet to kick it with one another. The way we've always bonded was through basketball. And then that essentially kind of um, slowly started into turning, turning into something else where like, you know, our, our friends, Tanner and Jordan and and all of our friends really who traveled with us, you know, became kind of our thing to do, to meet people, um, you know, to party with people, to play hoops, whatever often became from that baseline avenue. I think it was really like a, a simple process for just a couple of young fellas who loved playing hoops growing up. And then once we actually grew up and had the opportunity to, to travel abroad, we kind of just brought that with us and uh, you know everywhere we went first thing on the agenda was let's pull up google maps or whatever and, and find a find a court to play on and just kind of slowly over time i think the experiences we had became more profound uh as they went on and and uh, at some point we we're like okay let's let's make something from this I like to think of it's the best way to travel. Um, I think when we when we travel, we want to get immersed in the culture in these places, and there's no better way, in my opinion, to play basketball with someone. Um, it's just it's a good lang like we talk about the language of basketball, and um, in an, in our opinion, we think it is the best way to get to know people who are local. It was you know what. We had been playing pickup ball for a long time. We've been playing basketball in the community for a long time. But I don't think until, maybe not until we played actually that one night in Albania, where we, you know, we were absolute outsiders walking in to a foreign city, don't know the culture, the language, the people, and we don't know where to go outside of like, you know, where's a good place for tourists to go eat? We end up at a community basketball court and it took a little bit of feeling it out, but it, it turned out we'd been speaking this this like universal language the whole time of sport, and specifically basketball for us. And uh, I don't think we appreciated that until then, that this wasn't just something our friends do. This was something, you know, anybody who might end up as our friend does. At some point in time, I think, it started to become something because of your love for photography. And I don't think that like, it wasn't anything more than playing pickup street ball and hooping um, until we realized that there was all these stories to tell. You know, when you take pictures of like people playing basketball and whatever, like you realize like, wow, basketball is so much more than just a game, you know, it's like, the culture surrounding basketball, it's how people play, uh, different rules people have from different places, it's sneakers, it's music. And uh, for me, that was kind of uh, really brought me into the world of, of photography and, and storytelling. The sort of culture, the vibes that that come with basketball and the basketball community, um, whether that be like a hip hop influence or like a multicultural influence, 
I think like the goal for the logo was something that it's sort of like the name, you know, it's like buckets and borders. It's meant to like the concept is that like playing basketball can break down borders. And whether that be like borders between continents or borders between provinces, like I think that's what buckets and borders in in my head was kind of like to represent. I think it's it's different from logos, other logos that are out there. So I think there's something peculiar and interesting about it to to an outsider. Yeah, and I think the goal was to have a logo that felt inclusive, a logo, and I think that comes in with the the, the variety of colors that are used in the logos is just like this feeling of happiness, like friendliness, um, togetherness, and um, yeah, I think that like that's what we were trying to really encompass with the Buckets and Borders brand. I think, and I think we've done a pretty good job of, of, of doing that so far. The decision to build courts, I think, was always like in the background of something that we would love to do. And I think when we both kind of entered into our professional careers, Buckets and Borders had moved on from, you know, just being our project to something that like, you know, our friend group really supported um, and had really grown to a group, which um, that group ultimately turned into the group that wanted to build these courts in Lakeview. So I think we'd always talked a little bit about, you know, like the cages beat down, we'd love to redo it. Um, and then after experiencing some of those courts overseas, we were like, damn, like the court, the number one court has to be the cage. Our initial thoughts to see how it can go is we, it's gonna cost 85 G's and I have no idea if we're gonna pull it off. Allowed to sit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return of the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never like those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All it really take is a little taste. I like girl blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it to get away. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah, I got the semi four way. Don't step out the line like this, a probate. You hit the line and try to locate. This for the time, got time for no day one. Too many, I'm going. Too crazy, and I got bad ones, and they ready. A good time, so now it's in New it, we left that. Can't remember anything, but I know we got late, late, late.